Award-winning producer Jason Blum revolutionized the horror industry. After several years in the studio system, Blum grew frustrated and knew there was a better way. Fate stepped in and a low-budget horror film dropped in his lap, completely changing his career. In this video, we'll take a look at the career of Jason Blum, the formation of Blum House and its recipe for success. All that and more coming up. Born February 20th, 1969 in Los Angeles, Jason grew up in the art world. His father, Irving Blum, was an independent art dealer and the director of the Ferris Gallery. His mother, Shirley Blum, was an art professor. In interviews, Jason describes his parents as hoity-toity art types. He was destined to be a part of the arts in some way or another. Blum graduated from Vassar College in 1991. His focus was on business finance and film, both of which he used in his future endeavors. While at Vassar, he and fellow future filmmaker Noah Baumbach were friends and roommates. After college, Jason wanted to be an actor so he moved to Chicago to work in community theater. He soon realized he didn't have the skills to make it as a career. He ended up having to sell cable TV door to door to earn a living. At 25, Jason worked as producing director of the Malapart Theater Company, which he founded with friends along with Ethan Hawke. This is where he learned about producing and collaborating with talent. Jason's former college roommate, Noah Baumbach, was shopping his script, kicking and screaming around with no luck. Jason saw this as an opportunity to get his feet wet in the industry. He sent the script around to some friends in the industry, including longtime family friend Steve Martin, who endorsed the film. Jason used this endorsement to gain leverage with the studios, and he managed to scrape together $1.3 million to make the film. This led to Blum's first film credit as associate producer. The film also introduced Blum to low-budget indie movies, which is what he found success with in his career. Blum next landed a job with Miramax. He spent the next several years learning all he could about the industry, working as a producer and eventually the head of acquisitions. Some people referred to him as Harvey Weinstein's protege, but this couldn't be further from the truth. He was treated very poorly and was at the point of quitting the industry altogether. Finally escaping the clutches of Miramax, Jason next went to work as an independent producer for Paramount Pictures. And he finally got a chance to produce a big studio film which actually turned into quite a nightmare. Blumhouse was built out of the frustration of studio films and the love of indie films. Jason wanted to take the indie film experience and use the power of studio distribution. Jason began to put together a business model where filmmaking could be fun and highly profitable. His experience with paranormal activity proved that a small budget didn't necessarily mean small profit, as long as you had big distribution. The first order of business was to figure out how to make a big movie on a shoestring budget. One way was to pay everyone scale, which basically means minimum wage, with the understanding that if the film was a success, everyone would be paid accordingly. This model is actually pretty clever and gives everyone the incentive to do their absolute best. Secondly, choose scripts with a limited amount of locations to shoot at. Less locations means less money. And finally, cut out all unnecessary, expensive special effects. The way he came up with his budgets was calculating what the minimum amount of money the film would make even if it bombed or never made it to theaters, which made the movies virtually impossible to lose money. 
Jason's next important change he wanted to make was giving the director full creative control, only offering opinions when asked. This was huge, especially for directors who'd been burned by Hollywood in the past. One of the first movies to test out this new formula was Insidious, directed by James Wan. I went into Dalton's room. There was something in there with him. I know someone who can help. The film was made for $1.5 million and pulled in a staggering $100 million at the box office. He followed this up with Sinister, starring longtime friend Ethan Hawke, who he would collaborate with throughout his career. That's the family who lived here. This film was made for $3 million, and it pulled in $87.7 million at the box office. Even after the success of those first films, the industry still had doubts that this new model worked. It wasn't until after The Purge where people began to take notice. Blumhouse has gone on to produce some of the most successful horror franchises ever. For the most part, Blumhouse has stayed true to its original concept after over 13 years of success. The legacy of this production company is still being written and I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of this video. Check out some of these other videos from the review.